All right, so hopefully you're comfortable with the systems model. So we mentioned CPU interacts with the memory, writing to memory locations can either store the values or they can affect uh, the peripherals. Similarly, reading the value from memory might read data or it might read the peripherals state like switches state. And what we reasoned there was there are certain addresses that correspond to the peripheral that correspond to the storage and that correspond to the code right and we'll discuss a little bit more about that in a bit but what i want to first kind of paint a picture of is uh, how to go about imagining a cpu right so cpu kind of you know if you have had any exposure to any basic computer science course uh, they usually start off with you know there is like an alu arithmetic and logical unit there is a control unit and that's pretty much it or at least that's what i can recall uh, that's very basic and you know that's true also but what i want you to now imagine is a little more nuanced picture of a cpu so a cpu obviously has address bus and it has the data bus so these are like physical pins or wires going out of the cpu right so let me just write here address bus and then there is data bus and what i'm going to do for the sake of reputation is call this data address bus and the data bus similarly then we talked that there is also a instruction bus and there is something called well instruction address bus right and both of these buses are going to the memory perfect so now the the model that we are focusing on and i kind of hinted that it's called the load and store model so this is load this is store so the the data or the instruction needs to be fetched into the cpu first and you know then things need to happen and then the answer needs to be written back to the memory so just for the data there is something called and we'll get to the details of it when we talk about memory there is something called general purpose registers so registers are essentially flip-flops or the digital devices that can store bits that can hold information and you know for our sake we can assume this to be 32 bit wide meaning that each register is 32 bits and there might be n such register typically 16 32 64 or 128 something like that and these are called general purpose registers right so if you want to add two numbers let's say one and two and save the answer to hex i don't know 2004 location for example so the one and two must be stored somewhere in two registers then the addition is performed and who performs the addition well the friendly alu okay and who instructs what addition needs to be done or what you know operation needs to be done the control unit and how does the control unit get to know what needs to be done well based on the instruction that came in and that instruction internally to the implementation usually there's something called instruction buffer Again, instruction buffer is an extra detail. You don't have to remember it. You don't have to imagine it. It's just that the instruction will come and sit here. And based on what that instruction is, the control unit understands what signals to activate and, you know, which register to be selected from the register, uh, general purpose register bank, it is called. Right. So GPR is what we call them. And so two numbers get added, the answer gets put back into, you know, third register. And later this third register is, the content of it is what we will be sent to the address hex 2004. 
all right so hopefully you got some idea now let me again redraw it just so that you know it just sticks um, uh, with you or stays with you so we got the data bus i am not going to write again um, and we got the instruction bus i mentioned the instruction bus stuff will come into instruction buffer there is a control unit internal circuit details of which we don't care we only know that it activates or makes the cpu do something in alignment with the instruction then i mentioned there is something called the gpr the general purpose registers and then there is an alu and we mentioned load store architecture what that means again is we must get the data in in where into the gpr you know act on the data store the answer into the gpr and later send that answer out to the memory right so that is what you should imagine when we are talking about the cpu okay so now few questions here how does the cpu know what instruction to fetch like what is the address of the instruction well the answer to that is there is another set of uh, registers but specifically one among them is called the program counter and whatever number program counter holds that is the location from where the instruction will be fetched right so the address that is being sent out here on the instruction address bus well that is the address or that is the number that the program counter is holding so so far what have we seen we have seen that the cpu has two buses data and instruction then it has something called gpr general purpose registers where the data is fetched first computation happens the answers are saved there and then the answer is sent back to the memory right and then i must also just for the sake of completeness oh oops yeah for the completeness draw this read write thingy right extra wire to control read write okay so gprs and then we said the control unit reads from or gets the details from the instruction buffer it controls the alu and the general purpose register read write and that is essentially how the calculation happens the alu does the calculation now interestingly to complete the story the program counter content is what will go out on the instruction address bus whatever the instruction comes stays in the instruction buffer instruction buffer the control unit in first actions controls the alu and the register files computation happens very cool so far so good now the other thing is certain sort uh, certain computations can lead to answers that are zero negative overflow so there is another register the status register that tracks the status of a calculation whether or not a negative number was generated did the subtraction of two numbers lead to a zero all of those is saved in the status register right so this is pretty much what you need to remember about cpu you can imagine that an address is being floated floated meaning it is put on the instruction address bus hits the memory the memory responds on the instruction bus with an instruction and then uh, you know the instruction buffer is where that gets cached and the control unit infers the actions controls the alu and the registers and uh, whatever computation happens you know the depending on what the computation is the data can be fetched from the memory to the gpr or saved from the gpr to the memory the alu if it computes negative number zero number all of that there is a special register called the status register to keep the results or not keep the results but keep the status of the computation and the program counter is incremented to go to the next instruction the final question here now is who loads or who sets the program counter value it is fair to assume and i'm saying fair to assume because you know the details are very nuanced but it's fair to assume that on the 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 machine that we are talking about the system that we are talking about this starts off with the value zero so when you power up the machine the cpu is going to fetch the instruction from the zeroth memory location fair all right so this is pretty much it and um, 
oh, okay, maybe I should also let you in on one more uh, piece of detail, which is, so these are general purpose registers with the two special registers here, program counter and the status. Usually, uh, the current CPUs also have an extra register called the stack pointer, right? So this this will come towards uh, this will come handy towards uh, you know deeper conversation around how does the C program pass parameters between functions. So just a heads up for that. And uh, stack pointer is what will help us. It's just again another register, another placeholder which has bits, and those bits are pointing to a location in memory. And that is where the stack is. For now, I just want you to remember that. Okay, let's see if there is anything else that I should be telling you. Okay, I'll give you a heads up. So this model of the CPU is the one that will enable you to master the concepts of pointer, right? And uh, the very dreaded concept for God knows why, but, uh, or at least all my junior engineers, friends that I've worked with uh, have always told me that they find it difficult to understand pointers. Uh, but if you have this model of the CPU in your head and you reason based on this, trust me, all sort of pointers, pointer mathematics, everything about pointers would be a piece of cake for you. All right. And then assuming that you have been able to make peace with this model, I will see you in the next one.